With endless night and cloudy skies above, the only light sources in dim city are artificial. Think neon signs, flickering fluorescent lights, and eerie pulsing street lights. The lack of natural light creates an otherworldly feel for most. But Fall spends most of his days in the rims of the tower, as do his comrades. Thus, the illumination of Dim City doesn't shock him that much. It's also worth noting that Fall himself has lived in a future version of Dim City, which he will expound upon in a later chapter. Fall has one of the patrolmen take a squad car, drop him off at the address, and wait outside while he questions the woman inside the apartment. A woman he claims is an eyewitness to the car roofing incident from earlier in the day. Fall chooses the squad car mainly because he doesn't know which vehicle belongs to the lieutenant and has no idea where anything is in Dim City. On the ride across town, Fall watches the raindrops on the windshield and muses about his situation. The rogue queen's thugs were unable to track me due to Bliss's morphic resonance field once I surrendered it to it and became part of the matrices here. Bliss's minions, too, are none the wiser, assuming I've been converted, I guess, and now leaving me alone. I mean, I'm in a car with one of them right now. The only catch is that I was suppressed, submerged, fucking charmed until I could resurface. Thank goodness it was only for an hour. Maybe something in this ring helped me break out of it, or... I don't know. I just know that Ornaninchu has to be saved. I've got to break her free from whatever role she's caught up in. When the squad car pulls up to the address, Ford discovers it to be an apartment, just a step above a flop house, located on the third floor of a wax museum. Arcus 6, one that has seen better days and now hangs a sign reading closed for repairs. Repairs that, truth be told, are more likely just false promises. The patrolman cuts the engine, and its muted roar dies into the thick night air. As Fall steps out of the squad car, he hears the city hum with a tired vibrance. Turning back to the patrolman, Fall says, You wait out here. If I'm not out in 15 minutes, you come in with guns blazing. You hear? Once the man's eyes begin to bulge out of their sockets, Fall gives him a wink and a reassuring smile. Relax, rookie. I've just always wanted to say that. This is going to be a walk in the park. Fall adjusts the brim of his fedora, catching the reflection of dim streetlights shimmering on the wet, cracked pavement. From the corner of his eye, he notices the wax figures in the museum's abandoned two-story windows, frozen in mid-grin, their ghostly smiles lit by the flicker of a dying neon sign hanging above the entrance. Fake upon fake upon fake. Where's the core? Fall asks the dim sky above. Where's the thing that's real? The museum is a fitting facade for the city, Fall muses lighting a cigarette before proceeding. Dim City offers Fall a glimpse into the mind of Elspeth Nehrani, the real name of the entity whose mind is behind this city's existence. Elspeth Nehrani, Bliss for short, the namesake of the Bliss Field. She is both Dim City's creator and its caretaker. Dim City is a town teetering on the edge of a cliff with yesterday's despair urging it to go on, to go over, to jump. Yet the city hesitates, hoping to be yanked back from that ledge by the promise of tomorrow. With a measured stride, Fowl crosses the desolate alleyway. The hum of distant jazz, always jazz here, he notes to himself, bleeds from a gin joint across the street. The building leans like a weary giant, its paint peeling away revealing a slow decay beneath what seems to be decades of neglect. Fall climbs the warped, creaking staircase, shoddily attached to the side of the building, each step echoing like a whisper in the stillness. The iron banister feels slick under his fingers, 
due to the rain and remnants of careless nights and spilled secrets pooling in the shadows beneath the open staircase. Reaching the landing, Fall pauses to catch his breath and let the chill of the evening seep into his lungs. He discards his cigarette butt over the railing and down to the street below. There it is, room 317, the door a dull brown, now chipped and faded. He raises a hand, his knuckles brushing against the grainy wood, which has hidden countless stories behind it, some sweet, some bitter. Fall takes a moment to steady himself, allowing the mist of the city to wash over him before he knocks, the sound resonating like a heartbeat in the silence. He then hears the vibrations of a woman's sultry voice mingling with the night air. Yes? Who is it? Uh, police. Uh, Lieutenant Handler, uh, ma'am. May I come in? La porte est ouverte. S'il vous plaît, entrez. Come in. The door, it is open. Whatever awaits fall behind that door, he knows it won't be dust and silence. It will be a melody wrapped in shadows, 